Good evening, everybody. You are welcome for this lecture on contraception. Let's first define contraception. Contraception refers to the deliberate use of methods, devices, or medications that prevent pregnancy by interfering with fertilization or implantation. Let's move on to the significance of contraception in reproductive health. Contraception enables individuals and couples to exercise control over their fertility in that they decide when to have their babies or when to have a rest from having babies. Another second point of significance of contraception in reproductive health is that it promotes the spacing and timing of pregnancies for optimal maternal and child and child health. You will realize that when pregnancies are well spaced, it means that by the, by the time the mother becomes pregnant again, she will be more healthier other than the mothers who do not space their pregnancies and also their children will be much more healthy. Third point about the significance of contraception in reproductive health is that it reduces the incidence of unintended pregnancies which can have social, economic and health consequences. Some ladies or some or some ladies or some couples they may become pregnant but in fact they had not yet intended to become pregnant. Maybe they became pregnant by accident because they were not they were not prepared socially, economically, so this may have health consequences on them. Point number four, contraception empowers women with reproductive autonomy and opportunities for education, career development, and personal fulfillment. You may realize that when women use contraceptives, it means that they have high chances of pursuing their education before they actually come to settle down and start delivering babies. Women also have high chances of developing further in their careers and this will be a personal fulfillment in that when she starts delivering babies and when she has already achieved her career, she has pursued her education to the level that she wants, then now settles down to start bearing children. That will be good for her. She will have achieved her development and also personal fulfillment. Let's look at the historical perspective of contraception. Ancient methods that were used for contraception include traditional herbs, animal bladder condoms, and women grow. The barrier methods included linen condoms, these ones were discovered in the 18th century, rubber condoms, these ones came in, in the 19th century, hormonal methods, the hormonal methods led to the development of birth control pill. 
This was in the 20th century. Then as time went on, also modern adverts came in, whereby the long-acting reversible contraception methods, like for example, the intrauterine devices and the implants, they were also invented. Let's look at the impact of contraception on society and women's rights. Access to contraception has been a crucial factor in women's liberation movements. Female contraception empowers women to make choices about their reproductive health, education, and careers. Find that when the women are using contraceptives, it means that they can have ample time to pursue their education and also careers. Contraception also reduces the maternal mortality and improves maternal and child health outcomes. In that, when a mother is left is using contraceptives to space her children, it means that before she delivers some other babies, her body will have been her body will have revived from the other previous pregnancies. What do we mean by this? You may find that there are some mothers who deliver almost every year. This woman is pushing a baby. Every year this woman is pushing a baby. And delivering every year takes the body of the woman very tired. Others end up developing severe anemia, which is not healthy for her and also for her baby. So you will find out that when a mother is severe and anemic, she goes into labor when she is severe and anemic, she can end up getting postpartum hemorrhage. If she is not safe, it can lead to maternal mortality. So you find that uh, the use of contraception in the societies has reduced maternal mortality and it has improved the maternal and child health. Let's look at the current global contraception trends. Current statistics on contraception, on contraception use and trends. According to the World Health Organization, it estimated 64% of married or in union women of reproductive age use contraception Global. Regional differences, there are regional differences that are whereby there is higher usage in developed regions compared to the developing regions. There are also challenges in access, limited availability, cultural barriers, lack of education, and also poverty. You may find that some women cannot be easy, cannot easily access the contraceptives because of cultural barriers that are behind it, and also if somebody is not educated, if somebody has not been given education regarding the advantages of contraception then it means that individuals or women may not go for the contraceptives because they don't know how good they are. Uh, and also poverty. Especially the women who are poor may not get access to the to, to use contraceptives because they could be expensive. Let's look at the common barriers to contraceptive use. Cost. One of the barriers to contraceptive use is the cost, whereby in cost, we have the affordability of contraceptive methods. You may find that some of the ladies may not be able to afford buying the contraceptive methods because they are expensive. The second barrier is lack of access. 
where you find that there is limited availability in rural areas or underserved populations. Cultural and the religious barriers, we have the stigma, the misconceptions and the opposition. For example, uh, the religious people will mostly say that it's not good to use the contraceptive methods. Some other misconceptions from various cultures is something that when a woman uses contraception, you may not be able to, to have healthy pregnancy, other people have some conceptions of this sort. Then also lack of awareness and education. There are many people outside the area who don't know the importance of using contraception. Don't know the advantages. So lack of awareness and education, insufficient knowledge about contraception and also its work. Let's look at strategies to overcome the barriers. One of the strategies to, over, to overcome the barriers that we have just mentioned in the previous slide include one, improving affordability and availability of contraceptive methods, which means that each and every hospital or PHCU or PH primary health care centers or P primary health care units, they should be availed with the contraceptive methods. Strategy number two is to strengthen the health care infrastructure and also service delivery, meaning that the primary health care centers, the primary health care units, they should be availed with the human resource, that is the, the nurses and midwives who can be able to provide some of these methods to the clients. Strategy number three includes promoting comprehensive sexuality education and awareness campaign campaigns. It means that um, the health personnel, they have to go further into the rural areas, educating the women about the importance of the contact Another strategy to overcome the barriers includes addressing cultural and religious misconceptions through community engagement and also counseling. As we are aware, of the different cultures in the world, they have different misconceptions regarding contraceptives. So, it is important that the communities are also health educated on the advantages of using contraceptives. Advantages and disadvantages. Let's look at one of the methods of contraception, which is the hormonal method or hormonal contraception. Let's look at its mechanism of action or how it works. Hormonal contraception works by suppressing population, preventing the release of eggs from the ovaries. Second way hormonal method works is by making the cervical mucus very thick. So if the cervical mucus has become very thick, it means that it is difficult for sperm to reach the egg. Then in some cases, in some cases, hormonal contraceptions alter the uterine lining, making it less receptive for implantation to take place. Now 
let's look at the importance of consistency and adherence. Common contraception requires consistent use for consistent use to maintain effectiveness. What do we mean by this? It means that if you are taking the hormonal method of contraception, you need to take the pill every day at the same time. If you cannot take the pill every day at the same time, then it means that the pill will not the, 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 the pill will not be effective enough because you are not taking it at the same time and consistently. Missed or irregular use of the pill can increase the risk of unintended pregnancy. Let's look at the types of hormonal contraception. We have the birth control pills, birth control pills, under which we have the daily oral tablets that contain synthetic hormones, and these synthetic hormones can be in form of a combination or progesterone, progestin only pill. Then we have the transdermal patches. Transdermal patches, these are thin patches applied to the skin that release the hormones. Then we have the injections. Injections are long acting injections of progesterone hormones and they are administered every few months. Then we have the vaginal rings. Vaginal rings are flexible rings inserted into the vagina that release. The hormones. Then we have the implants. Implants are small rods inserted under the skin that release hormones over an extended period. Let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of each method. Birth control pills. The birth control pills are convenient. They are reversible, meaning that when you plan to conceive, you can stop taking the pills and they also offer menstrual cycle control. It means that it makes the menstrual cycle become regular and they require daily adherence, which means that every day you need to be taking the work, the pills. Then we have the transdermal patches. Transdermal patches require weekly application, discreet, and they are also reversible, except skin irritation may occur. Then we have the long injections, the long acting, which are also highly effective, and there is no daily maintenance, because if you have got the injection once, it means that you will have to wait for another three months, then you take the injection again. So you don't need to get worried of taking the injection every day, every day, like how it is in the birth control case. So the injections require health care providers, health care providers visits, so that the injection can be administered to the client. Then the vaginal rings, vaginal rings, this require monthly insertion. They have fewer side effects than the pills. They may cause vaginal discomfort. Then we have the implants. These are long-acting and they are highly effective and they are also reversible, meaning that when the woman wants now to conceive, she can go and they remove the implant. The implants will require a minor surgical procedure for insertion and removal. Let's look at the common side effects and potential health risks of some of the methods. The side effects vary depending on the method. 
that is being used. So some of the side effects may include nausea, breast tenderness, breakthrough bleeding and mood changes. Some hormonal methods may carry a smaller risk of cardiovascular complications, blood clots, or hormonal imbalance. Let's look at the importance of consistent use and adherence. Consistent use is essential for maximum effectiveness. Because if you don't use the pill consistently, then it means that it will not be effective, meaning that in between any time you can easily conceive. So let's look at some of the tips to help the client improve adherence. One of it includes the following. One, the client should establish a routine for taking the pills or changing the patches. If, for example, the client takes her breakfast at 7 a.m., so it means that by 7 a.m., by the time she goes to sleep in the evening, the pill must be just near that near it. Maybe around where she takes her uh, where where she takes her breakfast. This will make her not forget. So that is what is meant by establishing a routine for taking the pill or changing the patches. A second tip can include setting reminders or use of smartphone apps meaning that you set a reminder in your smartphone that will remind you the exact time of the day for taking the pill. Then the third tip includes discussing concerns for side effects with healthcare providers. A client may be on a method and then all of a sudden she begins to have either heavy bleeding or spotting in the period, so it is important that the client goes back to the healthcare provider so that they discuss about the side effects of the pill and the health provider will also be, help, be able to help her on how to go about with the side effects. Another tip is to ensure a sufficient supply of contraceptive methods such that a month such that the client does not enter into the next month when she does not have contraceptive methods with her. Let's look at barrier contraception and its mechanism of action. Barrier contraception works by physically blocking sperm from reaching the egg. How does it do this? It means that barrier contraception creates a barrier between the sperm and the cervix, hence preventing fertilization. Let's look at the importance of proper use and adherence. Barrier contraception requires correct and consistent use to ensure effectiveness Inadequate or improper usage may lead to contraceptive failure, meaning that if you don't maybe apply the barrier method correctly, this may lead to contraceptive failure, meaning that the client may end up becoming pregnant. Let's look at the types of barrier contraception. The first one is the condom or the condoms. Condoms are thin sheaths made of latex or polyurethane. And condoms are worn over the penis, that is male condoms, or inserted into the vagina, that is female condoms. Then we have another type of barrier contraception, we have, which is known as the diaphragm. 
Diaphragms are dome shaped device, they are made of silicon and diaphragms are inserted into the vagina to cover the cervix. Then we have cervical cups. Cervical cups, these are small thimble shaped device, they are also made of silicon that fit over the cervix. In other words, this barrier methods, as you remember, this mechanism of action is to prevent the sperm gaining entry into the vagina, gaining entry into the what? Into the cervix, then eventually into the other part of the uterus, then into the fallopian tube where fertilization usually occurs. So when a cup has been put on, it means that when a cervical cap or diaphragm or condoms have been used, it means that they will prevent the sperm from traveling to reach and fertilize the ovary. Okay. Let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of each method. The condoms. Condoms protect against sexual, sexually transmitted infections and pregnancy. However, they may decrease sensitivity. If the couple are in their sexual act, it means that the sensitivity will not be there. It will be there, but it will be reduced. Okay? Then we have the diaphragm. The diaphragms, they are reusable. They are hormone-free and they provide immediate contraception. Therefore, they require proper fitting and use with a spermicide. If the diaphragm are not fitted properly, then it means that some sperm may get access into the cervix and travel to the fallopian tube, then fertilization may take place. So, if a spermicide is also added on it, it means that the spermicide will be able to fill the sperm. The cervical caps, these are reusable, hormonal free, and they can be inserted hours before intercourse. They also require proper fitting and the use with spermicide. Let's look at the effectiveness, safety, and side effects. When used correctly and consistently, barrier methods are highly effective in, pre in preventing pregnancy. But if not used correctly, then the client will not be protected from what? Pregnancy. Failure rates vary depending on the method, but can be higher than hormonal or long-acting methods. Let's look at the common side effects and the potential health risks. Side effects are minimal for the barrier methods except allergic. Side effects are minimal for the barrier methods except allergic reactions to latex or spermicides or spermicide may occur. Barrier methods provide no hormonal protection against sexually transmitted infections except the female, the except the male condom. Let's look at the importance of profiles and adherence. Correct and consistent use is crucial for maximum effectiveness. Tips for improving adherence include the following. Educating the clients on the proper usage and the application of the methods. Second tip is to ensure access to quality condoms or barrier devices. The third tip is to encourage communication and mutual agreement with the partners. 
Then also encourage regular sexually transmitted infection test testing alongside barrier method use. Encourage communication and mutual agreement with the partners, meaning that if the partners have agreed that they are going to use a condom, let it be worn in the proper way so that it will be effective. Because there are certain times whereby the partners have agreed that they are going to use a condom, but then you may find that when that time comes, the male partner will wear on the condom, and after wearing on the condom, then he will try to to make a small tear at the tip of the condom. So meaning that that condom is already broken, so it won't be effective to protect the woman from what? From becoming pregnant. That is why we are saying that encourage communication and mutual agreement with the one with the partners. In that if they have agreed, yes, they are to prevent pregnancy, it is so. Let not the other partner, let not the male partner go behind and tear the condom. Let's move on to the try trying devices, the IUDs. Their mechanism of action. Intrauterine devices are small T shaped devices that are inserted into the uterus. They work by preventing fertilization and inhibiting implantation of a fertilized egg. Some intrauterine devices release hormones, and these are known as hormonal intrauterine devices, while others do not. These are known as non hormonal intrauterine contrast intrauterine devices. Let's look at the importance of proper insertion and follow-up care. Correct insertion by a health provider is essential for, a, for the effectiveness and the safety of intrauterine devices. Follow-up care ensures that the intrauterine device remains in place and also addresses any potential complications that may occur. Let's look at the types of intrauterine devices. Number one, we have the hormonal intrauterine devices. These release progestin hormone to prevent pregnancy. And the hormonal intrauterine device, they are effective for three to five years, depending also on the brand. Then the non-hormonal intrauterine device, these are usually made of copper, which creates an inhospitable environment for sperm, and they are effective for up to ten years. Let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of each method. Hormonal intrauterine devices, they are highly effective because we say that they are long acting and they can reduce the menstrual bleeding. Non contraceptive intrauterine devices, non hormonal contraceptive, non hormonal. Intra intrauterine devices, these are also highly effective. They are long acting, they are hormone free in that they don't release any hormones, but they may cause heavier periods and cramping. Let's look at the statistics on the effectiveness of intrauterine devices. Intrauterine devices are most of them. Effective forms of contraception with failure rates less than 1%. The effectiveness of intrauterine devices is not user dependent, reducing the risk of the human error. Let's look at the common side effects and the potential health risks. 
Side effects vary depending on the type of intrauterine device that is being used. Some of these side effects may include cramping, irregular bleeding and expansion. Serious complications can occur such as infection or perforation, but they are also but they are rare, but they can also be possible. Let's look at the usage and adherence. The importance of proper insertion and follow-up care for intrauterine devices. Correct insertion, insertion by a health, a health care provider is crucial for the safety and effectiveness. Follow-up visits ensure that intrauterine devices in place, monitoring of any side effects and also addressing any other concerns that arise. Let's look at the tips for improving adherence. Clients should be educated on the importance of follow-up visits and recognizing signs of intrauterine device expansion or complication. And some of the signs that we may tell the client that maybe the intrauterine device has been expelled include the following. She may not be able to feel the strings. If she cannot be able to feel the strings in the vagina, it means that the IUD has been expelled, or at times the strings are shorter or longer than usual. This one may also tell her that the IUD has been expelled, or the client may also feel the IUD herself in the vagina, meaning that it has been expelled, or when they are playing sex with the partner, the partner may feel the IUD. Or the client may also feel pain, or at times she may have a heavy bleeding. So it is important to encourage open communication with healthcare providers regarding any concerns and issues. Let's move on to another type of contraception method. Another type of contraception method. We have types of sterilization. We have tubal ligation. Tubal ligation, this is a surgical procedure that involves blocking, sealing, or cutting the fallopian tubes in the women. Then we have vasectomy. Vasectomy is a surgical procedure that involves cutting or blocking the vas difference in men. Vas difference is the tube that carries the sperm, that transports the sperm to the urethra in the male. Advantages and this, let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of each method. Tubal ligation. Tubal ligation is a permanent contracep contraception method and it does not require daily maintenance. It involves surgical surgery and it is irreversible, meaning that if the client opts to go for a Tubal ligation, it means that she is really done with delivering babies. She doesn't want any more babies. Otherwise, you cannot be able to reverse it once it is performed on a client. Vasectomy, vasectomy is a permanent contraception. Relatively, it's a simple procedure and it requires careful consideration as it is also difficult to reverse. So it means that the man 
to be aware that when he is deciding to go in for a vasectomy, it means he is done with the issues of making women, to, making her woman to become pregnant. Effectiveness, safety, and side effects of the of the methods of the sterilization methods. We have the tubalization and vasectomy. These methods are very effective. They are highly effective as methods of permanent contraception. Failure rate is extremely low, but there is a small risk of pregnancy in that if the tubalization was not done in the correct way. Common side effects and potential health risks. Sterilization procedures carry minimal side effects such as pain, bruising, or infection. Vasectomy may have a rare risk of long-term testicular pain. Usage and adherence. Importance of informed consent and counseling for sterilization. Sterilization, remember we said is a permanent sterilization is a permanent decision. Remember we said that sterilization is a is a permanent method of contraception. Therefore, it requires an informed consent and careful consideration. Which means that really the couple, whether it is a man or whether it is a woman, they have decided that it is over. They do not want to have any more children. Otherwise, if they have not decided that they do not want more, then they should not go for sterilization. Let them go for other methods. Because in case one day they feel like they want to have a child. So counseling should address the irreversibility of the procedure and the alternative contracep contraception options. Let's look at tips for improving adherence. Encourage discussions between the partner to ensure a mutual agreement, meaning that they have really agreed they are going in for a permanent method of sterilization. Second tip the clients should be provided with comprehensive information about the procedure, including the potential risks and also alternatives. The third tip is the clients are offered counseling services for, individual, for, for individuals considering sterilization. Let's look at emergency contraception. Emergency contraception is also known as after morning pill or post contraception method. This is a method that is used to prevent pregnancy after unprotected intercourse or contraceptive failure. Okay. So, emergency contraception, it is intended to be used as a backup option when regular contraception was not used or has failed or was not used incorrectly. For example, the woman may have been taking pills regularly. Then maybe one day maybe she didn't use the pill correctly. So she can use emergency contraception as a backup as a backup method. Types of emergency contraception Emergency contraceptive pills. We have the hormonal pills that can be taken within a specific time frame after unprotected intercourse. Then we have the copper intrauterine device 
This can be inserted as an emergency contraception within a specific time frame after unprotected sexual intercourse. Let's look at the effectiveness, safety, and side effects. Statistics on the effectiveness of emergency contraception. Emergency contraception are most effective when taken as soon as possible after unprotected sexual intercourse with a reduced effectiveness over time. Meaning that if you take it after some time, the emergency contraceptive field is not going to work. Copper intratrine device is a highly effective and can also serve as ongoing contraception. Common side effects and potential health risks. Emergency contraception pills may cause nausea, vomiting, or changes in menstrual bleeding. Copper intrauterine device insertion carries minimal risks, but the client may have cramping and heavier periods. Let's look at the importance of timely use of emergency contraception. Emergency contraception is most effective when taken or inserted as soon as possible after unprotected intercourse, sexual intercourse. Encourage accessibility and availability of emergency contraceptive options in case an individual has gone has gone into an issue of unprotected sex sexual intercourse. Let's look at tips for improving adherence. The first tip is to increase the awareness and the education about emergency contraceptive contraception methods because many people outside there may not know about the use of the emergency contraception method. Second tip is to ensure easy access to emergency contraception through healthcare providers, pharmacies, or family planning clinics. They must be availed within the emergency contraception method. The third tip is to encourage individuals to seek timely medical advice and support after unprotected intercourse. Let's look at procedures of using or inserting family planning methods. All contraceptive pills combined or progesting only. If an individual is going to use oral contraceptive pills, they could be combined or progesting only. It means that the individual is advised to take one pill every day at the same time. Meaning that if you began taking your pill, for example, today in the morning at 8 o'clock, it means that even tomorrow and the other subsequent days, be taking the pill at 8 o'clock in the morning, same time. Number two, start the, the, the pack or the pill should be started on the first day of the menstrual cycle or as directed by a healthcare provider. For the combined pills, for the combined pills, take two active pills for 31 days, followed by a week of inactive pill or placebo pills before starting a new pack. For progesting only pills, Take them continuously without a break. Let's look at contraceptive patches. Unused 
new patch is applied once a week for three weeks, followed by a patch free week. The client is instructed to apply the patch to a clean, dry area. This area could be on the abdomen, buttocks, upper arm, or tarsal, and avoid areas with the cuts, irritation, or lotions. Let's look at the contraceptive injections. The client will receive an injection of progestin only contraceptive, contraceptive from a healthcare provider every 12 or 13 weeks. And the client should ensure timely follow up of injections to maintain effectiveness. Otherwise, if she doesn't keep the same day and the time, then it means that the injections will not be very effective. Vaginal rings. The vaginal rings, these these are these are inserted, the vaginal ring is inserted into the vagina and it is left in place for three weeks. The ring should be removed after three weeks and have a one week break before inserting a new ring. Let's look at implants. A healthcare provider inserts a small flexible rod, rod containing progestin under the skin of the upper arm. The implant provides contraception for up to three to five years depending on the brand. Let's look at the condoms, male or female. Unroll, unroll the condom. The, the, the condom should be unrolled over an erect penis that is a male condom or insert it into the vagina if it is a female condom before any sexual contact. The glands should ensure proper placement having a reservoir at the tip if it is a male condom or ensuring that the outer ring covers the outer genitalia that is if it is a female condom if the female is the one using the condom then after ejaculation hold the condom at the base that is if it is a male condom then you remove or twist the outer ring and gently remove it, that is, if it is a female condom. Diaphragms and cervical caps. The diaphragm is inserted, or the cervical cap is inserted into the vagina, and it should cover the cervix before sexual intercourse. Use of aspermatocyte. A spermatocyte can be used also to enhance, to enhance effectiveness. That is, in case if the, if the cervical cap was not applied properly, then the spermatocyte may feed off the sperms that could have escaped because the diaphragm of the cap was not inserted very well. The diaphragm should be kept, or cervical cap should be kept in place for at least six hours after sexual intercourse and removed within 24 hours. Intrauterine contraceptive, intrauterine devices, the hormonal. IUDs, a healthy provider inserts a hormonal intrauterine device into the uterus 
during a pelvic examination. The intrauterine device will remain in place for a period of three to five years, depending on the brand which is being used. Non-hormonal property intrauterine device, a healthy provider inserts the non-hormonal intrauterine device into the uterus during a pelvic examination. Then, the intrauterine device remains in place up to a period of 10 years. And if the client decides she may not reach the 10 years and she goes and they remove it, so it depends on the client's decision. Sterilization. For sterilization, when they are carrying out tubal ligation, it means that the client will be given will, he will be given anesthesia. Then the surgeon blocks seals or cuts off the fallopian tubes through small incisions made in the abdomen. Then for vasectomy, vasectomy is done under local anesthesia. The healthcare provider makes a small incision in the scrotum to cut or block the vas difference. Emergency contraceptive pills. The client is reminded to take the dose of emergency contraceptive pills as soon as possible after unprotected sexual intercourse. Number two, the client should follow the specific instructions provided with the pills and or consult a health provider. Then the copper intrauterine device, a health, a health care provider inserts a copper, a, a, a copper intrauterine device into the uterus within a specified, within a specific time frame after unprotected sexual intercourse. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day. Thank you.